Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I'm getting ready to do a live on a Christmas card. And today is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and give it a makeover. And uh, I think I pretty much stuck to today's uh, challenge card. Oh, and I didn't even pull up. Oh, I was busy doing other things this morning. I had everything ready to go. And let me just, um, uh, I'm going to pull up while we wait for everyone to come on here. I'm going to pull up uh, the sketch card for today. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to pull this up. Here we go. That is the card that we are uh, giving a makeover to today. You can't really see all of it. Um, really well down at the bottom but if you have a holiday catalog you can turn to page 34 and get the uh, a better view without that little bar coming across and let me also pull up the sketch uh, for today scroll down sorry I should have done this earlier let me hide this and then you can see better. So on my card, I actually did two inches by five inches. I used a much narrower um, uh, band across. So it's a very simple layout. And I think you can do a lot with it because um, you can lay something across that layer like I did, which you'll see in a second. And, um, or, you can just stamp right on that piece that's coming down. So there's a lot of options. And I totally forgot to go post my card over on um, Casing Tuesday Facebook group this morning. And so I'll have to do that right after here. So I haven't seen if anyone's posted anything yet. I always have the post um, set to go live at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so that it's very consistent. And I hope you will uh, join in on our group challenge and uh, copy the card with us. So I'm gonna switch over cameras. Good morning, Mary and Renee. So glad that you could join me this morning. Switch over to my other camera. And, okay, let me slide into view. This is the card that I created today. It's very hard to get light in here because I've got a lot of light coming from behind and even though I have drapes, I'm gonna see if I can add a little bit more light. Okay. Um, so here is the card that I have created using the Yummy Christmas stamp set. I love this stamp set. It's so cute. And I'm going to show you how I colored this piece in a second. But this is the stamp set I'm featuring on my blog this week called Yummy Christmas. And it is a standalone stamp set, but if you look in the annual catalog, you can get matching framelits for it because we had a set and it's also a bundle called Cuckoo For You, and it has a very similar shape. And some of the same shapes can be cut out. So we've got um, a tree that can be cut out in both sets. Um, this one here cuts out arc, um, the reindeer head, and it cuts out the holly. Uh, leaf right there and we've got um, this one that cuts out the gumdrop so it's very clever that you can use the die from the annual catalog to cut this out this stamp set will be available approximately until the end of December but I'm pretty sure we'll find out in about a week what is carrying over I'm pretty sure this will not be something that will be carrying over not too many stamp sets do so if you're thinking about getting that cuckoo for you bundle down the road you might want to pick up yummy Christmas because it people will want it afterwards and they won't be able to get it it will just be gone so you might want to pick that up now if you're thinking of or if you already have this one because they do work really well together and the 3d project that I have scheduled tomorrow um, does use the framelits as well so I just wanted to point that out to you um, but this is just a cute little set and I'm glad that we've got that bundle that matches it in the annual catalog. So I don't know if there's anything else I want to say about this card, but so let's just get um, stamping. So let's create this focal point here first. So I'm going to be using um, the gingerbread house 
stamp set and the early espresso ink pad and I'm just going to ink this up really well. I find it easier to ink this big stamp up when it's sitting uh, facing up than the other way around. Make sure you've got a good solid inking of that image. I'm going to close this up for now. And I'm just going to stamp this right in the center of this. I know if I wanted to conserve cardstock, I could stamp it over on the side, but for now, I'm just going to stamp it right down in the center. So we're going to color this. And one thing I really love about uh, Stampin' Blends is that it colors up on colored cardstock really nicely. If you were to do this with regular uh, markers, it doesn't always look so good. The color remains a little bit truer when you're using the Stampin' Blends. We're also going to be using a chalk marker for the white accents. So I'll start off with the Real Red Light. And I'm just going to come in and um, I kind of discovered yesterday that I colored too much of these little candies. So now I am just doing um, portions of the candy and I'm leaving um, two of the quarters white or uncolored and um, that way I think it looks a little bit better. It looks more like one of those starlight candies and you can just come along. I might not do this whole thing colored but you can see you'll do all the candies down here. Then you'll come in and do the bow and you can color this differently of course but I find especially when I'm in a rush sometimes what I do is I go online and I look up an image uh, from that same stamp set that someone may have already colored just to give me a guide I don't always follow everything they do but sometimes it's just easier to just kind of give me a hint like especially if I'm in a rush these little buttons right here will be red and then of course candy canes are iconically red and white so you'll uh, want to come in and do red and white or you can be wild and do a different color I am NOT going to judge you uh, but I'll just come in and just hit those spots so you're not really doing as much coloring because you've got already the brown in the background that looks like gingerbread so you don't have to do quite as much coloring. So then you'll come in with your Call Me Clover Light and you'll want to come around and do this wreath and uh, just kind of work your way around all the little berries in the wreath. I know some people really love to color so this can be a real nice therapeutic thing to do. Uh, stamp a bunch of them and then uh, color them in front of the TV. I'll do the door handle green and then I'll do these little gumdrops green. You could go wild with the different colors. We now have Stampin' Blends in many different colors so you can really have fun with this and not be boring. So I think I've got all the green elements that I want. I'm going to take my soft suede light and do the little gingerbread man even though he's already brown, it, you can make him a little bit distinctive by um, coloring him in a little darker. So that way he'll pop away from the uh, rest of the stamped image. Okay, let me see. Hello, Karen. Uh -huh. Karen's still on the fence about the stamp set. Karen, tomorrow, you have to tune in tomorrow if you like 3D. Maybe maybe that will push you over the top. Um, if you have that Cuckoo for You bundle, I don't know, I would probably go ahead and get it. And I didn't even, in the US, let me see if I can find my catalog real quick and um, pull up the price. Um, just curious real quick how, how much the price is. The Yummy Christmas stamp set is only $16 in the US. It's not that much. So, you know, if you are a collector, then I would say, you know, go ahead and, and get it because I have customers that regret getting things, especially Halloween stamp sets. But 
things like this that have matching um, dyes with them, you know, then later on it's really hard to find um, them. So I like the chalk marker because you can come in now and hit little pieces like you can brighten up this candy here. And this is, I didn't do this on my original image, so you can brighten up the candy. You can come along and do these little swirlies. You can come along here and do the edge of this wreath here. And this just mimics royal icing, right? So, you know, it's really cool to have those white accents. So um, the majority of your image is already done up in, um, in brown, so you don't have to color that, but now you're just coming in and hitting all the little accents with the white and the red and the green. So, you know, I think maybe it takes a little less time, I don't know, but it's just kind of fun. And then you'll want to do the snow down here, fill it in. I'm not going to color the whole image, but you can kind of get the idea of how you would want to color it. And uh, you would finish the accents and finish the snow and all of that. So that is how I would color it, just with four, four coloring tools. And then I would run it through the Big Shot with this die here from the Cuckoo Clock dies. So just um, run that piece that you've colored through with the die. And then you get this piece right here. Ooh, and I really wanna, I didn't realize this, but I'm, I really kinda like the way the white popped out here. So I'm gonna come in. I, I did this piece earlier today just so I would have one ready. And, but I really like the little pops of white on the candy. I think that really makes it there. I think that looks better than my original. And I did the roof white here, but I actually like it kind of just being um, plain gingerbread and that also saves you a little bit of time when you go through and color it. So I kind of like that. That makes me happy. All right, so now we're going to do this piece right here. And so this is a two inch by five inch piece. And what I'll do is I'll just lay my piece on here like this to kind of give me a guide of how far I need to stamp my um, images down here. Open up my Early Espresso. And let me clean this off. I stamped it in a different color yesterday. So uh, I love how this um, stamp set works with the greetings because it has wishing you a, and then it has Christmas. It's all on one stamp, and then you stamp the other word in between uh, with a different color. Or you can do the same color, but it allows you to switch colors and greetings. So you're just gonna come in, let me stand up so I don't get my head in the way. Should just stamp down here and do wishing you a, and then you can choose, you can do happy or you can do yummy. Shall we do yummy today? Just because I wanna be a rebel. And then let me just stand up and see if I can get this somewhat centered. There. And I like how this word is really scripty. So even if you're a little bit crooked, it's not going to matter. So how did I get these little um, little corners out of here? I just used my half inch, half inch circle punch. And I'm just kind of sticking this in quarter of the way I, I do eyeball it. And that will give you that ticket corner look. Looks about right. And that will give you that little bottom piece. Then we're coming in and um, doing some pieces. We're going to um, take a piece of Call Me Clover and run it through with a button button embossing folder. And I looked through all my embossing folders and I thought, which ones would look the best behind here? And there are a lot of different choices. 
but I like the button button embossing folder for this because it's kind of whimsical. It kind of reminds me of the little candy of on the gingerbread house. So I thought it would be a nice kind of fun background. So I embossed that earlier. And then of course I have a card base. This one is a half sheet of cardstock and it measures 11 by four and a quarter and then scoring in half at the five and a half inch mark. So I'll just take this and I'm going to add it to my card base with some Tombow. This Tombow is almost at the end of its run, but let's see if it will work out here. Let me stand up, kind of add this to the front. Squish it down. And then we're going to add this piece. Maybe about there. That's about, mm, about five eighths of an inch from the right side, approximately. And then I think I want to add this one right here with some dimensionals. So I'll just add a few on here. You'll need at least five to support this little guy here. You could also put one in the center. And then just peel off the backings and hope they don't stick to you. And um, they don't stick to you as you're walking through Whole Foods and people are wondering why you have little white hexagons stuck to you. So Thanksgiving, if you're um, looking, um, watching this uh, from the US, American Thanksgiving is in two days. And um, you would think that I would cook a turkey, but no, I do not. I go to Whole Foods and I buy all the fixings for Thanksgiving <laughs> because I don't like to cook like a big meal like that. That will take hours and hours and hours. I love to bake. I, I absolutely love baking, but I do not enjoy making Thanksgiving dinner. So I kind of always um, uh, get my Thanksgiving dinner at uh, a place like Whole Foods. Uh, we used to get Fresh Market. Um, and that, you know, you still have to heat everything up. So I am still in the kitchen for a little bit, but it's not as bad as having to cook everything and then keep everything warm at the same time. Especially since we don't have any family here. It's going to be just my husband and I. Our son is up in Canada and um, now I'm totally digressing, but our son is up in Canada and he doesn't have American Thanksgiving off. Canadian Thanksgiving was in October. We had Thanksgiving up there already and he can't um, come up here or down here to, to Boston. So we are having Thanksgiving dinner by ourselves. And so again, like why would I spend hours cooking for two people? Maybe some of you would, if you enjoy it, I hope you do cook your, your turkey dinner, but I don't. So um, I will, I'm going to fresh, not fresh market. I'm going to Whole Foods today and I'm hoping they have everything that I need for my dinner. Otherwise we might be having something instead of turkey um, and, uh, or we might go out for dinner. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, so there's the finished card. I did add like a little baker's twine bow down here and you can definitely do that. Um, so you can just kind of, you know, when you use a tone on tone color bow like this, it's there, it's pretty, but it's not taking away from the main image, right? Um, so that's why sometimes if I would use like, um, I have a, a bow here. So I guess I could stick this on here. There's a real red bow that I tied with, um, oh, I don't even know what that's called. It is called the, curly ribbon, real red curly ribbon. Um, so you could do something like that, but I'll tell you this, if you look at the two of these, right, 
and um, this bow is almost too big for this and it's it's like down here at the bottom saying hey look at me look at me and really what you want people to look at is your gingerbread house you don't want them to look at the bow um, so it's better if you have um, like the flow of a little bit of a bow that blends in a little bit better and then you can direct people to where you really want them to look because if you put something very blingy and showstoppery like this bow right here it sometimes detracts so it depends depends how you want where you want people to look it doesn't look terrible it, it looks okay maybe just a little bit smaller in real red would work as well um, but this one's kind of more understated um, I do like the way I colored this one better I like how I did the red and white candies up here and I left the roof uh, brown I think that one uh, works a lot better so there you go that's how I would color it up let me pop back here and let me read your messages hello Amy and Betty and uh, uh, Karen is replying to my remark that she she wouldn't cook just for two either yeah it's all it's kind of hard when you just have two people and you know I don't want to spend hours and hours in the kitchen um, when I could be doing other things that you know are are just as just as fun or you know working in my craft room um, so yeah it's just easier for me to go and buy it and Whole Foods has pretty good stuff I really can't complain when I get something there um, don't often shop there just because it's a little out of my way but today I'll go and I'll fight the crowds I'm sure it's gonna be crazy there already I'm like kind of dreading that part um, because just getting in the Whole Foods parking lot um, a lot of people um, in my little city, I live just outside of Boston in a city called Newton. It's really, it's you would almost consider it a suburb, but it's this own little city. And people in Newton um, love health food. And so whenever I go there, it's like a fight to like, you know, get in that parking lot. And uh, uh, even on a morning like today when the kids are still in school, it, it's crazy see and like it will be packed in there I'm sure um, and uh, yeah I kind of dread it but I'm gonna go for my husband because that's where where he said he'd like his Thanksgiving dinner from if it wasn't coming directly from me so that's what I'm gonna do um, okay uh, let's see Betty says this gingerbread house was on uh, one of my cart swaps at on stage I love this stamp set it is such a cute stamp set and for $16 it is a bargain that's um, $16 in the US so I would definitely um, recommend getting it especially if you got or will be getting the cuckoo for you let me bring this in bundle because later on um, you will not be able to get yummy for Christmas I am pretty sure it will not carry over so um, it, it is one of those things that I would pick up and luckily this is not something that is going to um, sell out right away but I, w I wouldn't leave it until the end because you know what happens is like you always think oh yeah I'll pick it up at the end of December because it will still be available well you know by the end of December your brain is like you know it's done with Christmas and then you'll have the dies but you won't have the set, the extra set that matches it. And for only $16, I think it's worth it um, just to get it, just so you can have the extra little pieces that you can use. Because some of the pieces you can use um, with the cuckoo clock, right? You could um, uh, use, um, add some of the candies um, from the Yummy Christmas onto the cuckoo clock if you wanted to. So it's, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you want to join us on our Casing Tuesday Facebook group, and hello, I also um, didn't mention Mary Se um, Siebert. So she said that she loved the card. Um, we are doing our casing over on our Facebook group. So if you haven't already joined us, you can just look for the Facebook group link down below and ask to join. And then we are we can share our cards that we've made with this layout over on the group. And last week I had over 200 people join the group. I was like, whoa, I kept 
approving people and approving people and I think that's great I am always happy to see new faces and a, a bunch of people posted new cards so I hope you will join us because I think this is a really worthwhile endeavor it gets us out of our comfort zones it gives us a starting point so there's so many good things about copying and then we're doing something all together which is a nice thing too um, so what uh, Amy asked the question what block does it take to stamp the house let me have a look this is an e block uh, for the house um, you could use, if you have a really big block, you could use a bigger block, but I would recommend using the E block for this. Um, I just wanted to see, I'm pretty sure Stampin' Up, what I like, and I think they still are doing this, if I'm not lying, here we go. So um, the nice thing about what Stampin' Up does with their catalogs now, is you go to the page in the catalog that um, the stamp set is on and down below there they will say suggested clear blocks a b e and h so um, those are the blocks that um, would work best for the stamp set and i also believe when you go to the store um, it will also tell you if you go online if you don't have a copy of the catalog you can go online and it will also tell you which blocks work best for the, the stamp set and um, I, I don't know if you can see this oh it might be too heavy to lift let me see if I can get it over here I don't know where I got this little tray but I have duplicates of all of my blocks because sometimes I'm working on multiple projects and what happens is I um, I have stamps that I don't take off the blocks right away because I'm like, okay, I've kind of got the design down for this, but I haven't done the finished project. So I have like all these blocks out here. So if you are a demonstrator, um, I kind of, what I did was I started picking up an extra block here and an extra block there and, um, you know, just adding it to an order. So it's not so painful, like to have to buy a whole block set. But there are certain blocks, like the smaller blocks, like the little B blocks. Um, I have oh, probably about six of those and I have six C blocks. Um, and just so that I have them for those steps. Now the bigger ones, I don't have as many um, blocks of these ones because I don't, the bigger stamp sets you don't use um, as, as much. But I like to have I like to have a few of those blocks on hand. I know I'm, I I guess I'm a really dedicated person. I've been stamping what? Uh, oh, it's gonna be 14 years um, as a demonstrator up coming up in January. Uh, plus, I stamped a few years before that, so um, it's a good long time that I've been stamping. So I'm very dedicated to this. Um, well, it was a hobby. I guess now it is a business, but uh, it's nice to have those extra blocks. So I hope that answers your question, Amy. So all of you have a great Thanksgiving if you're celebrating in the U.S. I hope you get a chance to get together with family because really that's what it's all about. Um, I know my, my son, uh, I'll send him a happy Thanksgiving text message and my Canadian family, um, they're not going to be upset that they're missing out on American Thanksgiving because it, you know, they've already celebrated Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, but so it's a little different for us, like half, half a foot in Canada, half a foot in the U S but, um, we will still be celebrating and enjoying our small little family here. And I hope you do the same. And um, I know it's very hard sometimes this, these times of years because we get together with family and a lot of family have a lot of differing opinions on things and stuff. Um, but just remember you're so lucky to have them around and try and find your similarities, not your differences because um, we can always find something that we can talk about that hopefully isn't contentious and um, so maybe maybe some of them will stamp with you or maybe some of them think stamping is stupid but whatever let try and find the things that um, that you have in common and um, uh, work on that because you know life life's too short we we've got to try and find ways to get along right 
All right, guys, I hope you have a great week. And oh, I'm going to be um, uh, back here tomorrow. I have one more project to squeeze in before Thanksgiving. And I know some of you will be on the road or cooking or whatever, but um, you'll want to uh, stay tuned tomorrow. I'm going to do a 3D project with the Yummy Christmas Stamp Set. All right, guys, take care. Happy Thanksgiving.